Welcome to the Enterprise Browser Development Fundamentals. Here, you will learn how to build rich web applications for our enterprise browser-based solutions. Now let's talk about getting EB onto the device and how it works there, so we know what to expect. Here's what happens when you run an EB app. It's pretty simple. The EB is started. The config.xml file is read, and multiple settings are determined. Indicators, full screen, features available, licenses, logging, etc., including rendering engine. The browser initializes. Then EB navigates to the app start URL, i.e. a web page, which is either defined within the config file or explicitly, and loads the app. This can be remote, on a web server, or local, files stored on the device. The app starts and loads a couple of JS libraries that provide access to the advanced features, including additional enterprise APIs, local data storage, push, and many other niceties. You get to choose whether to include all or just some of them. That's it. The links below will take you directly to references on what can be configured in config.xml and how to create shortcuts that directly launch different apps on the same WM, CE, or Android device. To work with Enterprise Browser, you need to install it on the development machine as well as on the device. The installation package can be downloaded directly from Launchpad or Support Central. Once Enterprise Browser is installed, you will have access to detailed offline help, documentation and demo app with code samples, an installer utility that installs EB runtime on the device for you, a shortcut to the runtime APK CAB files for manual or MDM installation, etc. The installation utility requires ActiveSync for WM, CE, or ADB for Android. For WMCE, you have an option to install the light package that does not include WebKit Engine. This saves some space, which is necessary for older devices. Persistent for CE means that EB will be installed into backslash application directory allowing it to survive CE cold boots. Everything else is straightforward. Detailed instructions are available on Launchpad. For production use, you would also need a license that goes onto the registry on WMCE or into a special folder on Android. But before that, you have to request a license online. There is a detailed licensing guide. What you really need to know right now is that for development and demo use, a license is not required. You will see the NAG screen from time to time. Just tap it and then tap Cancel to dismiss it. After you have deployed the EB, you will want to put the config.xml in place to configure the browser. On Android, the EB config file resides in its external storage data directory, i.e. slash android slash data slash package name. The external storage in official Android terms could mean anything though. Can be your SD card, can be internal storage. It depends on the OS version and on the device. So a bit of testing might be necessary. On our KitKat devices, it is safe to use slash SD card at all times, since it actually always leads to internal storage, aka virtual SD card feature. If the file does not exist, it will be created on the first launch. On WMCE, the config file resides in the installation directory slash config subdirectory. If you deployed using the persistent installation mode, you would want to put the config onto the application partition so that it's auto-restored after cold boot. Now, EB is configured, but there's one more part sing. 
which is the app. You want to put app files in a location specified in your config.xml by the start page parameter. Or you can use shortcuts slash widgets to use custom config or custom start page. Your start page may be local or remote. You can see some examples on the screen. With a local start page, the best practice is to use absolute paths starting from the device root. Fortunately, both WM, CE, and Android allow it. It is always a good idea to keep the start page on the device, even if the rest of your app is on a remote web server. Why? Well, what if a user's device has no connectivity or the server is down? By having a start page on the device and using the connectivity API, you will be able to present a meaningful message to the user and actually check whether the Wi-Fi is enabled on the device, whether you have an IP address, and whether the server host is accessible, significantly reducing the support overhead for yourself and customer. Will they love you more for that? We will build such a page as our introductory exercise. It will teach us all the examples of Enterprise Browser and prepare you for complex challenges. Okay, let's summarize. To start working with EB, you need to download it from Launchpad or Support Central and install it on your PC. Then you build your app and config.xml. Then you can actually deploy it to the device. First the EB runtime, then the config.xml. Then the license, read the licensing guide for details, then the app files, and optionally shortcuts. All this can be either done manually or scripted via MDM or simple batch files utilizing ActiveSync or ADB. Okay, one final small topic before we get to build the app ourselves. Before building an app, it would be good to understand how the app is supposed to work. This won't take long. Enterprise Browser is based on the WebKit platform and includes full access to HTML5 modern web features. Here's a brief list of some of them. In addition, Enterprise Browser opens access to many device features, including barcode scanning, signature and image capture, gestures, network connectivity, and more. These features can be controlled through a cross-platform JavaScript API. However, not all of them are available on all platforms. Ever heard of a registry on Android? This is why you need to know how to use the API reference. Check it out on Launchpad. Now, let's take a look at the sample app. You can try out Enterprise Browser features by installing the Feature Demo app on a device. To do this, you will first need to download that app from Launchpad and copy its files to your device. Next, you'll set up the Enterprise Browser config.xml file to run the Feature Demo app on startup. And start the demo by tapping on the Enterprise Browser icon on the device. The detailed setup guide is available on the download page at Launchpad. Take some time to explore the app and its config.xml file. Let's analyze how the app is set up. You've already learned some config.xml features by following the setup guide. Now, let's take a look at the file and folder structure. Config.xml points at feature-demo.html as start page, so that's our entry point. Examining the very beginning of that file yields us a link to the CSS stylesheet nothing eb-specific, and two JS includes that are the magic files that give access to eb features. In most cases, you only need one of them, ebapi-modules.js. The row api-modules and elements are used for backwards compatibility with row elements 1, 2, and row mobile 4 apps. The img directory is simply a place to store all static images. Nothing special here as well. 
The API's directory name sounds promising. You would think this is where EB APIs reside. A fair guess. However, in this case, this is where the actual code samples reside. Each file demonstrates the use of one API. You can see the list to the right. This is what you will want to examine thoroughly as you start working with those APIs. Take your time playing with the demo app, and when ready, we'll build our own simple app to prepare you for the tutorials. If you feel like you want to peek inside those API demo sources, by all means, go ahead.